Question seven. Right, this one's going to be quite difficult to see on the screen, but it looks something like this. Let me just write in an extra line there for you so you can see. And let me just check what it looks like. Yeah, it looks something like this here. Okay, let's just have a see if we can work out what's happening in these graphs before we even have a look at the question. There are plan A and plan B, and their monthly contra cra contracts are as follows. Plan A, £20 monthly charge. So looking at the graph, plan A has £20 monthly charge. That's why it's flat along here. £20 is charged every month, no matter how much calls you make. Because 400 minutes are free. So up to this point here, there are no charge for minutes, but it's a £20 flat fee rate. Every extra uh, minute is 15p. How could you work that out? Well, you could say, for example, uh, sorry, it's 15p. You could say, for example, that in, let's say, um, 200 extra minutes, in 200 extra minutes, there is approximately an extra charge of, there is exactly an extra charge of uh, 30 pounds. So in 200 minutes, there's an extra 30 pounds. So 30 pounds is equal to 3,000 P. So 3,000 P divided by 200 minutes, that would give you 15 P a minute. Okay, looking at plan B quickly, it must have a flat fee of 30, I'll do it in a different colour, it must have a flat fee of 30 up to and including 600 minutes. And after that, for every 200, um, it's approximately 60, so 60 pounds, which is 600 pennies, over 200 which works out at 30p extra a minute. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the questions now, have a look at the questions. It says, Ben makes 800 minutes of calls a month, 800, which plan should he choose? Well, if he's making 800 calls a month, all you do is go to 800 on your graph, go up, you can clearly see that plan A is cheaper than plan B, so therefore he should do plan A. So the answer is plan A as um, plan A costs approximately £80 whereas plan B costs uh, over £90. Plan A as looking at the graph it's cheaper for 800 minutes. Sarah chooses plan B. How much does she pay for each extra minute of call? Well, Sarah chooses plan B, and we already said that for every 200 minutes of calls, she's paying uh, an extra £60. And as we said before, that £60, which is 6,000 pennies, divided by an extra 200 minutes, so that gives us 30 pence extra a minute. So 30p is our answer. We could have also looked back and seen that the gradient of this line was twice as steep as the other one, and therefore it was double the 15p. Okay, moving on to question eight. Very, very straightforward question here. Here is an input number machine. You input n and you end up with that. What did you have to do to get there? Well, if you did n, if you subtracted four, you would have got n minus four, and then if you multiplied by three, you would have got 3 times n minus 4, hence the answer. Work out the value of n so the input and output are equal. Well, the input is n, the output is this. So when they're equal is where n is equal to 3n minus 4. Expand your brackets. n is equal to 3n minus 12. Subtract n from both sides you get 0 equals 2n minus 12. Add 12 to both sides, you get 2n equals 12. And divide both sides by 2, you get n equals 6.
n is equal to 6. Let's check it works. Well, if we put in the number 6, and then we subtracted 4 and times by 3, well, 6 minus 4 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, you would have got the same input and output. Okay, let's move on to question 9. This was probably the first slightly tricky question. It basically involved um, sort of substitution. Let's have a look. The first three terms of a sequence are A, B, C. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. The term to term rule. To get from the first term to the second term, you multiply by 2 and subtract 4. So B, the second term, is the first term, which is A, multiplied by 2 and then subtract 4. Well, what's C? C must be the term before it, um, which is B. B multiplied by 2 and subtract 4. And we've got two equations here. This is what B is, this is what C is. I could call them equation 1 and 2. If I put equation 1 in to equation 2, where I see B here, I see B here, I'm going to instead put in this instead. So C is equal to 2, well B is equal to 2A minus 4, so I'm going to put in 2A minus 4, or subtract 4. Expanding, c is equal to 2 times 2a is 4a, 2 times minus 4 is minus 8, and then minus another 4. So c is equal to 4a subtract 12. Factorising the 4, c is equal to 4a minus 3, as required. OK, moving on to question 10. What we're doing here is we're... Um, manipulating some algebraic expressions. Simplify 2x cubed y squared times 4xy to the power of 5. The x is obviously to the power of 1 because x is equal to x to the power of 1. Two, you can do the numbers multiplied by each other separately. 2 times 4 is 8, so write it down. x cubed times x to the 1. If the base numbers are the same, you can add the indices. That's x to the power of 4 y squared times y to the 5 is y to the 2 plus 5, which is 7. Simply and very easily, x, y to the, uh, x, sorry, 8, x to the 4, y to the 7. Factorise fully this. What goes into 20y squared and 8xy? Well, certainly a y does. What goes into 20 and 8, the biggest thing we can think of, probably 4, so divide out by 4y. 20y squared divided out by 4y would leave me with 5y, and 8xy divided by 4y leaves me with 2x, and it's a subtract because we had a minus in here. So this is the factorised version. 4y multiplied by 5y minus 2x. If you want to check you got the right answer, times it out and check it works. 4y times 5y is 20y squared. 4y times negative 2x is negative 8xy as required. We're going to make x the subject of the formula. That means we want an expression where x is on its own on one side and we show it equal to the other variables combined in some way. Well, what happened to x in the first place? Let's just think about what happened to x in the equation they've given us. I had x, I would have had to divide it by r to get x over r, and I would have had to add y to get y plus x over r. So going backwards to undo it, I'm going to subtract y, and I'm going to times by r. Basically, that's how I make x the subject of the formula. So, let's subtract y off both sides. We get w minus y is equal to x over r. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by r. That just leaves me with x on this side. And we would have r multiplied by w minus y. Hence, x is a subject of the formula. x equals r multiplied by w minus y. Okay, working out the lowest common multiple. We usually do this 
using Venn diagrams and it's probably easiest to stick with this method we've learned. The first thing you have to do when you are doing Venn diagrams with numbers is break the numbers down into their prime factors. So 6x squared, how do we break that down? What times is up to give 6x squared? Well, what prime numbers times to give 6? It's 2 and 3, so 2 times 3 times an x times a y times another y and 3x squared y, well 3 is already a prime number so it's 3 times x times x times y. Draw your Venn diagrams out. What goes in the middle is what is in both lists. There is a 3 here and a 3 here so we put 3 inside. There is an x here and an x here so we put an x inside. There is a y here and a y here, so we put a y inside. Left over, we have 2 and we have a y, so we have a 2y. And left over here, we have an x. The lowest common multiple is everything times together, so that's 2y times 3xy times x. 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. y times y is y squared. Lowest common multiple is 6 x squared, y squared. Okay, question 11. Again, fairly tricky here. A lot of people struggled on this one, but again, keep your wits about you. Slow down, read the question a few times till it makes sense. There are some boys and girls at a bus stop. So there are some boys and girls at a bus stop. 11 girls get on the first bus to arrive. So now there are 11 girls less than there were already. The number of boys and girls at the bus stop is now the same. So the boys um, have always been 11 less than the girls that were at the start. 16 boys get on the second bus to arrive. So the boys go down by 16 and the girls have stayed down by 11. The ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls is now 1 to 3. So there are three times as many girls at the bus stop than there are boys at the bus stop. Okay, let's think how to do this. After the 11 girls get off, the number of boys equals uh, what's left over. So we can say that the boys were the girls subtract 11. We can also say at the end of it that the number of boys... Um, and the number of girls are in the ratio 1 to 3. So the boys at the very end is B subtract 16, and the number of girls is G minus 11, and we know that there are three times as many boys, uh, girls, as there are boys. So we have to multiply the number of boys by 3 to get how many girls there are. So let's use these two equations. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Equation 1 stays as it is, boys equals girls minus 11. Equation 2, multiply out, we get 3b minus uh, 48 is equal to g minus 11. Okay, both equations have g minus 11 in them, so we could make them equal to each other. Both equations are equal to g minus 11, so we could instead make the left-hand sides the same, the number of boys is equal to 3b subtract 48. Okay, let's subtract a b from both sides. So we get 0 equals 2b minus 48. Then we add 48 to both sides. So we get 48 is 2b. So b must be equal to 24, halving both sides. So b equals 24 originally. Then the number of girls must be 11 more than that. Uh, at the start, so the number of girls is 24 plus 11 is equal to 35.